posing 3D models with your hands, a shading assistant, facial expressions and a radical new way of adding perspective to your drawings and more? It is a day for celebration because not only have I finally made another video after half a year, we also get to take a look at some of the cool new features in Clip Studio Paint version 2.0 which releases today. Celsus, the makers of Clip Studio Paint, gave me early access to check it out and get familiar with the new tools and features that will help speed up your workflow and make it even more fun to create digital art, whether it's drawing manga or webtoon or elaborate paintings. Big thanks again to Celsus for the opportunity and for sponsoring this video. Let's get started with a feature that will help your characters express themselves. The updated 3D head. This is one of the new features in the 3D model section of Clip Studio Paint we'll be looking at today. The 3D models in the previous version were already incredibly useful and I've demonstrated that in previous videos of mine. However, they were effectively faceless dolls with a nose and two lines to help you roughly find your bearings when it came to adding eyes and a mouth. With the new models you can create a more personalized reference. The new head model has a lot of customizable options that we can take full advantage of by selecting the operation icon and then clicking on this little wrench here to open the menu. Under facial features you can find a multitude of ways to change the appearance of the face. And I love how simple it is, quite like a lot of the character creators from your favorite role playing games. Let's play around with the eyes and change the size, tilt them, position them differently all by playing with the sliders here while having the eyes selected. One good rule of thumb is to make the eyes bigger if the character should appear younger and to keep them on the smaller side when they are supposed to be older. Changing other features like the mouth, nose, eyebrows, ears, forehead or neck is just as simple. Since it's all in 3D you can get a feel for what your character will look like from any angle. And it's a good idea to regularly check different angles or you accidentally create someone with a vastly different, let's say, personality from the side. If you're worried about always drawing the same face for your characters, this will definitely help you break out of that. Typically though, the first thing you'll want to do is to create a more natural and handsome face for your OC. So let's try that. Here I am trying to make a face that suits my character Darius, so I can use it as a reference. Darius is more mature looking, a bit mysterious and maybe even a little sinister. So I try to keep in mind that his eyes are a bit smaller and his nose is also positioned a bit differently. I make the lips smaller and change the position as well. In case you want to create interesting, less symmetrical facial expressions, you can also change only one side of the face for certain features like the eyes, eyebrows and ears. I try to go for a bit of a badass look where one eyebrow is raised, so I adjust the eyes individually. For the final tweaks, we can go back to the menu and click on head model. Here we have 8 more archetypes to choose from. Select the head that is closest to the character you have in mind and slightly raise the parameter to push the appearance more towards the direction that you have in mind. Trying the other archetypes can sometimes work surprisingly well also. Lastly, you can adjust the lighting around your model. This was also possible in the previous version, but it wasn't necessarily that helpful for portraits for example. It only really helped you to get a rough idea of the general light situation. With this update though, the lighting for the head model has become much more usable for facial studies. Changing up the lights is also very simple. Pick the color and direction of the light as well as the intensity. You can also add a second light source to create that iconic by lighting. You can find the second light source in the options under Allocate. With the head and face of our character sorted, let's make him do something with his hands. Now we all know that drawing hands is difficult, very difficult. I mean even AI has trouble producing hands and apparently they can complete your whole master's degree for you. And along come Celsus and add a hand scanner to Clip Studio Paint 2.0 to help us all out in our eternal struggle. No 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 not that kind of scanner. It uses your camera to let you pose your character's hands with your hands. To get there, we first add a body model to the canvas by dragging and dropping it onto the head model layer. At this point I wasn't sure whether there will be much of his body visible in the final image, but I knew I wanted some hands in the frame. I mentioned it before, but if you want to get a deep dive into working with these models, check out some of my previous videos. So to make the magic happen, select your model and click on the symbol here. Then choose hand scanner. 
This opens another window with a little camera screen where you can look at yourself and your hand in all its glory. Once your hand is detected in the camera view, all of your movements immediately transfer onto the model in real time. Whatever you do, the model follows, like clicking on that like button on this video. You do have to make sure that your hand is properly lit and there is enough contrast to the background for the hand detection to work right. My built-in camera might not be the best in terms of position and image quality, but it still worked surprisingly well. Because my tablet is usually in an angled position, it has a slight frog perspective. That means I have to adjust my pose to make it readable for the scanner. The better your hand is detected, the less shaky the 3D model will get when following adjustments. I might need to test this at another point with a proper camera to see how well it translates. But at the same time, these are realistic circumstances in which I'd want to quickly bring up the hand scanner to tweak a hand without having to set up any studio grade equipment. Once I'm satisfied with the pose, I just need to click OK and the pose gets transferred to my model. For the other hand, it's basically the same. You just need to select the other hand and then navigate to the hand scanner menu again. With everything in its place, I now need to put the head on the body. I double click the head and use the arrows to position the head correctly. You want to make sure to have the body pose nailed down before you put the head on top, as any later adjustments and rotations to the pose will require proportional adjustments to the head as well. Remember, the head and body are two separate objects in our scene, but in the operation menu under object list, you can hold control and select both objects to move them around together. Later on we'll see another feature that can help you in a pinch if you need to adjust multiple things in your scene. But before that, let's have a look at the new shading assist filter. Clip Studio Paint already added the colorize option a few years ago. You would give it some line art and it would try its best to colorize it. I did a video about that a while ago, so you might want to check that out if you haven't already. The new shading assistant works a bit differently. What you need is the line art and a selection filled with color of the subject that you want the assistant to shade. There's a trick to quickly selecting your subject that I always like to bring up. Select the magic wand tool and click the outer area of your line art. Then simply invert the selection. On a new layer that is underneath the line art, you can pick the bucket tool and fill the selection with color. But make sure the bucket tool is set to only work on a single layer. Otherwise it will actually follow the line art from the other layer as well. Now you have a solid shape of your subject. The next step is to create selections for the individual parts like hair, skin, eyes and so on. And that's it for the setup. All you have to do now is click on edit and then shading assistant, which will immediately spring into effect. A big blue circle indicates the position of the light source. Simply drag it around to change the position from where the light is coming. Over here, there's a new menu where you can choose between different shading and color styles. There are cell shading and smooth shading options, which, depending on your style, both deliver really interesting results. If you have browsed through the options and something caught your interest, you can adjust the colors individually and also play with the intensity. Personally, I like to go for that cell shading look that adds a bright orange line around the shadows in reference to subsurface scattering. In the end, it comes down to your style of course, but I think this tool gives you a great starting point for your shading. It is quite useful if you are not sure about what colors to pick and lets you try out different light positions very early on, so you can get a feel for the kind of mood you can achieve with the overall composition that you started out with. If you've already progressed a lot on your drawing or painting, it's often a lot more difficult to make any radical changes. That's especially annoying if you suddenly notice any mistakes in regards to proportions or getting the hairstyle wrong accidentally. Should you end up in that situation, there's one more tool you can try to save all your hard work, the liquify tool. It's definitely my favorite feature and personal highlight of this new update. The possibility to liquify is close to the single one reason I switched from working mainly traditionally with pencil and paper to more and more digitally over the last years. It's just that powerful. To be able to quickly adjust proportions and experiment without the need to do the whole drawing again and again is something that in my opinion is almost more powerful than the ubiquitous undo feature you get from hitting Ctrl Z. That might be a hot take. Is it? I don't know. Anyway, with all the praise for Liquify, there also was one problem I had in prior versions of Clip Studio Paint. 
I'll just let the footage speak for itself for a short moment. Maybe you can guess what I'm talking about. As you saw, Liquify could only be applied to one layer at a time. So if you were already well past the sketching stage and you have already started adding colors on a different layer, any kind of edits using Liquify would need very delicate adjustments. You'd be playing around with fixing up one layer and then have to try to replicate the exact same movements on the second layer. Like scrambling a Rubik's cube and then trying to recreate the same exact scramble on the second cube. Well, to make it short, now you can edit multiple layers simultaneously using Liquify. And it's super simple. Just select the layers you want to affect before selecting the Liquify tool. While Liquify is great for making smaller tweaks and fixing mistakes, there are some broad, perspective-related things you can do in your drawing to really make it pop. This new feature I really had to wrap my head around first, but it's incredibly powerful. Honestly, I didn't even know I wanted it, but I had so much fun playing around with it, I just have to talk about it. It's the fisheye ruler. In any other context, a ruler sounds like the most boring thing ever. But believe me when I say it's an invaluable tool for any artist if you want to understand and construct perspectives. In fact, I'm also working on another video where I will go a bit more in depth about the standard perspective ruler that is included in the previous Clip Studio Paint versions. Make sure you subscribe so you won't miss it. But for now, let's focus on this new update. To create the ruler, go to Layer, Ruler Frame, Create Perspective Ruler, select 3 point perspective and then make sure the fisheye perspective is checked. This adds a new layer filled with curved guidelines to your canvas. The first time you see this, it will be a little overwhelming because it can be a little hard to tell what each of these guides is supposed to represent. But I'll explain it with a simple box. A 3 point perspective means you have 3 vanishing points, which are indicated by these bent triangles. One of them is floating above and the other two of them are stuck on the blue line that is supposed to illustrate the horizon. The horizon line is actually quite important to figure out the right viewpoint, but to keep it simple, for now, I just fix the horizon line by right clicking and select Fix Eye Level. This way we won't lose focus when we move the vanishing points around. So back to the vanishing points. Despite them all looking the same, they each actually contribute a different dimension to the mix. I give them distinct colors so we can tell them apart from here on out. One of the points that is stuck on the horizontal line I will mark with blue. The other one will be red and the free floating one will be green. The blue point that is stuck on the horizon together with the free floating green point gives you the guide for the front surface of your object. The lines coming out of them create a sort of plane, albeit a very bent plane, which in this configuration appears like the front of the object from our perspective. In more simple terms, any surface you draw using these two guides will dictate how tall and wide your object will be. Next, we look at the other point on the horizon line, once again combined with the free floating green point. They create a guide for the sides of the box. They determine the depth and also the height of the box in this example. But since we already decided on a height in the first step, we are now only left to decide how far the box is going into the background. The last combination is that of both of the vanishing points on the horizon line. So red and blue. These give you the guides for the top and bottom surfaces of the box. So in essence, the guidelines coming out of these points are a little like the axes on a coordinate system, you know from math class. Except here, they are very very bent. Oh, and also there are always two coming out of each point. Let's get an even better feeling for this by playing around with these points a little. Through the position of the horizontal line, we can determine whether we look up or down onto the object. If you put the line above the middle, you will look down on your cube and see the top surface. And if you put the line below, you will have a frog perspective. It is quite critical to keep in mind that depth and width are different things, despite looking like two sides of the same cube. This becomes quite apparent when you want to use the ruler to draw a central perspective, like when you look inside a room. What you would do is to take the red vanishing point and drag it along the horizon line towards the center. And from there we can do the same combinations as before. You might have noticed that through the movements of the vanishing points, the cube has been rotated at 45 degrees and now we are looking right inside of it. 
The front surface is directly facing us and the sides can be used as walls. Now all that's left to do is to fill the room with more details. You could start for example with a bookshelf or a table or maybe add another connected room. That warped and distorted look of the fisheye is a really specific effect. But after playing around with it I started to have a lot of fun and it quickly has become one of my favorite tools of Clip Studio Paint 2.0. Using the guides it really isn't hard to achieve decent results very quickly. You'll notice though that this exaggerated perspective is only present in the background. To make the character fit in I'll use the geometric distortion filter. First I'll have to transfer everything to one layer. If you want to keep your original layers make sure to copy them before merging them. And then go to filter, distort, geometric distortion. This filter is also part of the new update. And in contrast to the fisheye lens filter that has been there before, this one lets you adjust the size of the result while playing around with the intensity of the distortion. Making it a bit easier to use in getting the best out of this effect. In my case I try to replicate the fisheye effect that I have created for the background. I place the reference point somewhere around the forehead so that the warp effect happens at the matching area. If you want you can do a bit of fine tuning with liquify now or depending on the size of your canvas you can try to create the whole fisheye effect with just liquify on all layers simultaneously. Because with Clip Studio Paint 2.0 that is now possible. Lastly some honorable mentions that I didn't cover but that are pretty useful nonetheless. Align and distribute. This tool really helps if you want to create your own brushes and need to align the individual elements so the results look seamless. 3D fork and straighten. 3D models of environments now have fork included, so you have better reference for distances. And also you can now push the straighten button in case you need the model to be viewed in a two point perspective. Touch for 3D models. When using 3D models you can now move the camera with your fingers if your tablet supports touch input. Now which feature has been your favorite? Or if you are watching this at a later point, are there any new features that I absolutely must cover in a future video? Let me know in the comments. I'm also working on a more in-depth video on creating comic pages which will come out soon. So make sure to subscribe and activate the bell to get notified. And don't forget to leave a like. Every form of engagement helps. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. It won't take another month, I promise.